Today we're making le frappe or le chiacchiere called them what you want. This is my favorite carnival sweet delicious snack. <music> As we approach uh, Carnevale, the Carnival, there are two things to look forward to. One of it, of course, are the parties. And the second thing are the desserts and sweet things. And today we're going to make my absolute favorite, le frappe, also called le chiacchiere, le bugie, and they got hundreds of other names depending on where you are around from Italy. And the cool thing about this recipe is that it's over 500 years old. In fact, it first appears in some of the cooking texts from the Renaissance. So we think it comes from central Italy and it's one of those recipes that really has tested time and is changed a little bit but it's still a fantastic super fun recipe that is actually quite easy to do and we're going to do it today. For the ingredients we're going to use double of flour and that's very important because the double of flour is going to make really light frappe so when we fry them oh yes we're going to fry them they're going to become really light and crunchy. Then we're going to be using eggs a little bit of butter just a tiny pinch of salt sugar and a little bit of wine but don't be worried this is totally fine also for kids because the alcohol is going to evaporate and for the wine like in any recipe even when we do the pastas i always tell you use good quality wine because you're going to taste the flavor of the wine in whatever you're cooking so for this recipe i'm going to be using frutto della palomba which is a slightly fruitier wine and i think it's going to give a great taste to the frappe you can of course put everything in the mixer but today we're going to be doing it by hand so we put the flour in the countertop and we make our usual well just a few fingers and let's make some space in the middle of the well we put all our ingredients so the sugar the eggs we're gonna put one whole egg and one yolk we're then gonna add the butter so you can just kind of warm it up with your hands and we start mixing this And the idea is that you want to add some air and incorporate with the flour. Once it begins to be a little bit more sticky, you can use your hands. Put this together make another little well and we're gonna add the wine little by little and at this point Use the tip of the fingers and the back of the fingers. This dough will need about 10 minutes of kneading and I'll show you how to know when you're done. The bench scraper I find is always super useful when kneading dough, for making pasta, for making cakes, pizza, and for making frappe. After 10 minutes, you're gonna have a bowl like this. And to know if it's ready, you take a finger, then you press, and if it comes back, then you know it's got a good amount of elasticity, and we're done. Now we're gonna put a cloth over it, and we're gonna let it rest for 30 minutes to one hour. So we let it rest 45 minutes, so we can cut it into fours, and we can start working on it. Just cover the bit you're not using, and then you take one of these. No, wait. Then you take one of these. That's much better. And you try to make it really really thin a little bit of flour on the countertop flour on top and it doesn't really matter the shape you're going for because we're just going to cut it in all crazy different shapes and the dough the more you let it rest the less stretchy it will become so it will actually be easier for you to work it so had we waited an extra half an hour it would have been easier than now and we want this to be thin enough that it's almost transparent translucent, transparent, transparent, you can see it through. 
sort of like this. See, you can see my hand? That's the kind of thickness we're going for. And once you're happy with the thickness, you take this little gadget, which is the same thing you use to make ravioli. And this is really fun. I used to do it as a kid. You basically just cut whatever shapes you like. So you can go straight like this. You can make little slits. You can just cut in a crazy shape like that. Well, this didn't really cover well, but here you go. Or it's very traditional to just go for like little strips like that, and maybe like a two little slits like this, or just a normal slit like that. Doesn't really matter. Actually, if I remember correctly, my grandma used to do it quite thin, and I think she used to do little bows. Well, this is not very long, but she do little bows like this. Ellie, was your grandma used to do it like this or no? Yeah. And the final step is frying the frappe. You need to have a specific temperature, not over 170 degrees Celsius, because otherwise they'll burn, and not lower than 160 Celsius, otherwise it's just gonna absorb all the fat and be a little bit greasy. So I use one of these things, and we are 160 now, so it's time to put them in. Let's do it. Always very careful when you're frying. So away from you, let's go in. And when you put them in oil, they're gonna pop up. Look at this beauty. Give them a turn, make sure they're completely cooked throughout and you want a beautiful golden brown. I like to use the spoons to make sure every crevice gets the oil. And when they're golden, take them out, excess oil drips out, and we'll let them rest. Now, when it comes to topping, everybody does it a little bit differently. In my family, we keep things plain and simple, and we just add some sugar at the top. Icing sugar so it's nice and thin. And we just let it know. And now is the best bit where we get to try it. And I've never really tried it with honey. And Ellie says that in her family they do it with honey. So let's try this. A little bit of honey like this. And I know they look big, but they're very fluffy. And they're so delicious, so that, mmm, mmm. We know it's good. Wow. This is crunchy, and it's airy, and it's light, and it's sugary, and it's fried, and it's delicious. So go ahead, enjoy carnival, and make the frappe. Mm.